Hello there, good evening and welcome to Campaign Trail on your election half. And this program, as you're already aware, seeks to understand your members of parliament and aspiring members of parliament, why they need to represent you in the various constituencies. And this Campaign Trail is available on all our EIB platforms, on radio here in Accra, it is Star 103.5 FM in Kumasi, it is Ultimate FM 106.9, Empire in Takadi on 102.7 and Zeps FM. 92.9 also globally it is on farfm.com.gh tonight we sit with a member of parliament for a catching off anabu pitano chukotoy he's not a first timer and so we still want to understand what he's been doing since he started representing the people of a catching North and what he will do should he be given the nod again and i will thank you very much for your time Jigen. you are not new in the game you have been doing this for about three times already what is that thing you love most about serving the people of Akashino? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me say that uh, I want to thank the people of uh, Akati North mm. uh, over the years for supporting me to represent them in parliament. You know, the constituency was created in 2012. Yeah. And uh, I became the first uh, member of parliament to be elected. And as, I, as you said, this is my third term. Yes, um, I've kept faith with the people. Mm. Uh, I don't hide anything from them. I tell them the truth. Uh, they know what I can do and what I cannot do. So that has brought us together. Uh, I'm always with them. Okay. Yes, I spend almost every weekend in the constituency uh, to attend whatever program I am uh, invited to. And then to make sure that a number of developments take place. Mm -hmm. yeah, so basically, uh, I am with them and they are with me. So when you say they know what you can do, what can you do? Well, you see, in 2012, when the constituency was created, mm -hmm. I was then the GC for the entire of Akachi. Okay. Yes. So it was separated into two, north and uh, south. south. So I took the, uh, the north. And we put a number of uh, measures in place especially with uh, development and uh, that time NDC was in power so for the four years of NDC time mm -hmm. yeah we were able to make sure that uh, we pushed some development to the constituency although this government uh, NPP came and then they stopped the projects but I've been able to get some of them okay. uh, continued and uh, completed yeah so Looking at the basic needs of uh, our people, mm. yeah, that is what I have been able to do for Akashi some time now. Yeah. Well, over the period, what would you say has been your greatest achievement in the constituency? Yeah, when I assumed office as the DC, uh, the let me talk of the member of parliament, yeah, yeah I discovered that uh, with a new constituency, what we lacked most was human resource. Okay. Uh, when I looked at the profile of people from the constituency. I discovered that uh, we did not have the men and women with uh, necessary academic qualifications to find them in positions. Mm -hmm. So the greatest part, part of my resources, about 70% went into payment of uh, fees for those in uh, tertiary institutions, uh, colleges of education, nursing training colleges universities either for first degree or second degree yeah so i spent 70 percent of my resources and over the 12 are, are these resources coming from parliament no no not uh, from the government no uh, you know we have uh, sources of uh, 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 uh we have various uh, resources mm. yeah so like the common fund we have the get fund yeah so those things and other things that you as an individual mm. yeah individual uh, resources to you put them together then you support them mm. yeah so if you look at the file here those are the numerous requests that i have which i'm yet to uh, to honor yeah these are the resources for the request for the year which i'm yet wow. to even uh, yeah con conclude for the for the year but is this something you do annually as and when I get the resources. Because I, I read online that you have supported about some 47 students to the various universities. That is for this year this only. This year, yeah. Yes, yeah. 
That's what this year only. And last year, how many people did you oh, support? Can I remember? It should be more than 100. No, some is over the period. Mm. Okay, those who enter colleges of uh, education and mm. training colleges or health uh, related programs. Yeah, and for them, it is for the entire three years or four years that you find yourself there. Okay. Yeah, some is only for those who are doing. Uh, programs which are non-professional. Mm. Yeah, that one is as and when the resources are available, then I support them. Mm. Now, your contender, that's um, Bolano, he believes that he deserves to represent the people in Akachi North, not you. I don't have any Bolano in the area. Well, this is a uh, Akachi North seat. That's the parliamentary candidate elects for the NPP. Oh, it's a uh, uh, um, honorable Fosu. Oh, Fosu, right? Yes, yeah, it's a Fosu. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's a Fosu. Yes. Well, I don't think so that uh, the people give me the opportunity. So why is that? Uh, oh, uh, the track records are there to show mm. what uh, as NDC we have done mm. for our people. Mm. And the uh, NPP has come just to destroy what we are doing in the uh, constituency. You know, the district, as I said, was created in 2012 and we have started very well. But when MP came in 2017 up to date, they have uh, made the assembly go into bankruptcy. As we speak now, it's indebted to over 4 million Ghana cities to various suppliers and contractors. Mm. Yes, they are still even in court. So they I, have I, judgment debts that they are paying. Right. But yes. so are, are there projects that have been stalled because you think the MPP took over and decided to disrupt early developmental process? Oh, yes. Uh, there, are number of projects, mm -hmm. there are a number of projects stalled. When the MEP came to power, I can talk about the Avada uh, Akati Road, okay. which uh, was started in 2012. It was a 29 kilometer road that was going to be tapped as we speak now. It was abandoned. Uh, it, it was started in 2012. Yes. But between 2012 and 2016, you were. Oh, sorry, it was started in 2016. Sorry, okay. uh, it was started in 2016. Okay. Yeah, early 2016. Hmm. So it was about 30 to 35 percent complete. And when this government came, they stopped it. I uh, asked a number of questions on the floor. The road minister said uh, they hadn't got money to continue with it. That was what he told me. That is the response they gave you? Yes. When was this? Oh, that was around 2019. Okay. When we had waited for maybe them to continue and they were not coming. Mm. Yeah. At a point, they even said there were no documents on the road. That was what even forced me to as a question on the floor. Okay. And you confirm that uh, it was awarded, but they terminate, they didn't terminate, uh, they have challenged with finances. So that's why they are unable to continue. Mm. Yeah. But I can assure my people that when we come back, uh, we will continue with people. President Mahama was there last week and he gave the people fullest assurance that the road will be constructed or continued and completed as soon as he takes is, is that office. The only challenge that falls the people of Akachi North? No. If you go to the senior high school, mm. the only senior high school we have are the senior high school. The GM started a number of projects over there. Um, we have a boys' dormitory, we have an administration block. After the administration block, they stopped it from being started completely. Uh, there were six unique classroom blocks going on. And then the walling of do, the school. Do, 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 you, you seem to be, I don't want to use the wrong word, but do you know the reasons they seem to stop all of these projects? Oh, it is the same, it is one reason you or the other the over, over, the, over the whole country. Mm. Uh, and a project that was started by the previous government of NDC okay. all over the country were stopped. Okay. Yes, for no reason. And even as they say, they don't have resources. Some they will say they are doing a forensic audit, mm. and how long the forensic audit will continue and end, uh, we didn't know. Right. Yeah, so uh, some I had to use my position to get them completed. Yes, others uh, I was unable to get them uh, continued and completed. Right. Yeah. Now that you talked about the senior high school, let's do zoom into your role as a member of the education committee in parliament. You said on the GES board between 1978 to 2009, if that information isn't wrong. No, I never said on GES uh, board. You were never the assistant at GES? No, I was uh, at the office of the GES. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't serve on any board. But is, yeah. is it between the same period that I've posted? No. 
Um, I was in the Ghana Education Service, mm -hmm. all right, uh, but I never served on, on the, the board. board. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, so I was in the Metro Education Office okay. for some time. Okay. Yeah, before. How long? For, how long? Oh, I was from 2001 to 2009. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. then it, it, it gives you a fair idea of how the education landscape looks like. So I can confidently say that you're well versed when it comes to issues of education. How would you assess the education landscape? In this administration? Yeah, for my life, I think I've been in the education sector. Mm. And over the years, I've observed, I've learned all that uh, has taken place. Yeah, but if you look at what is happening now, I will say that uh, it is not the best for this country. Okay. If we don't in, reverse. In, in, in what regard? I'll come to the various areas. Okay. If we don't reverse the trend as we have it now, if you look at uh, basic education, our focus should be there. Mm. Uh, why at this time do we still have schools and batteries okay. or in dilapidated structures? You know, during the time of uh, uh, Professor Mills, mm. we were able to remove almost 2,500 schools and batteries because we knew that that was the foundation for any good and uh, what quality education. And that was what happened. Mm. So infrastructure for basic schools was uh, his uh, focus. And he succeeded in that. But over the period now, if you ask this government, tell us how many schools you have removed from the trees or under the trees. Mm. I don't know what number they can give us. Let me let me go to their own manifesto. Yeah. Where they talk about education and then it reads that they have significantly increased the number of classrooms and ancillary infrastructure to support foundational learning. Yeah, but they have not given figures to mm, it. No. Yeah, yes. At our time, we were giving figures. Okay. That's why I quoted about 2,500 during the time of uh, President Mills. And we continued with GM. That's why he thought that uh, once you have given the foundation for basic education, secondary education was going to be the next. Mm. That's why he started that progressive uh, really free senior high school and then the construction of uh, the e-blocks mm. because with basic education getting the foundation you should know that there will be expansion in the secondary schools and that was his uh, idea right yeah but then the, still talking about education the MVP yeah. in the, its manifesto says that they have increased reading comprehension among primary two limits in public schools and the figure which was 18 percent in 2016 has now become 38% in 2023. What is your response to that? Well, uh, we need to measure it before you can, uh, I can assess it. Okay. Because um, the challenge we have now is the distribution of textbooks. Mm. Uh, if you go to I mean, that is the reason uh, the smart tablets were introduced. Well, not necessarily because at the basic level, okay. reading is a major challenge mm. over there. You go to the rural areas, you ask them to read, you give them the textbook for that particular class. It is terrible. It's only the private schools that are doing well. So they augment this percentage they are talking about. But in the public basic schools, especially in the rural areas, mm. it is serious because they don't have the textbooks that will help them read. At the time we left office, uh, it was one child to three textbooks. Mm -hmm. Now, it is no longer the case. It's now three children to one textbook. And I think that is what we should try to uh, remedy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I feel we have not done well in that uh, direction. What, what are the tertiary institutions? How, how would you assess this government's commitment? I will come to the creative shortly, mm -hmm. but let's jump over to the tertiary institutions. How would you assess their performance? You see, after the tertiary level, they have, as an institution, mm. they have been doing well uh, within the circumstances they find themselves. But the challenge there is the number of students per lecture. Okay. You go to a lecture theater, you see so many students, even with some at the windows, listening to the lecturer. Mm. That is not what we should be expecting now. But that has actually been an age-long problem, hasn't it? Well, it was not as bad as uh, it is now. Because uh, 
okay, let me say at our time at Legon, mm -hmm. although the number was uh, high, we never stood at windows to take notes from uh, our lectures. Okay. Yeah, everybody was accommodated with it. So what this government has not done is the expansion of facilities. You see, we expected government to expand facilities. Mm -hmm. Now that we have so many people going go into senior high school, yeah, we should get corresponding infrastructure development okay. at the um, tertiary institutions. Now that you mentioned them, senior high school, let's just jump to the PhD just quickly. Why do you insist the bill shouldn't be passed? Well, uh, I am of uh, the view that uh, whatever bill they wanted to pass should not be only about the free senior high school. Mm. You see. We have challenges with the uh, Ghana Education uh, Act already. Okay. So we can amend it. When we amend it, then we incorporate all this into because if you look at the constitution, you, you want to amend the free SHS policy or the no no no. no. Uh, we have a uh, Ghana Education Act. Okay. Uh, uh, regulatory so, bodies act. Okay. We have uh, a lot of them, which talk about the free education. Mm. If you look at the constitution itself, that's where it mandates from. Mm. Then when we pass the act, it is also there in it. So even if you want to take it out alone and then make another law for it, why are we are we amending the other one? So why don't we amend the entire education act and then make sure that we incorporate it into it. Mm. Yeah. But, what is it that they want to make a law on it mm. that we don't know. Don't you think it is because the NDP believes that the NDC isn't committed to this free HHS policy and so they want a bill passed which will be later enacted into a law to protect the policy? You see, their only fear is about the review that we say we'll embark upon. Right, when you say because, review... Yeah, when you say review, it doesn't mean cancellation. Mm -hmm. I don't know from which Cambridge dictionary they got that meaning. Mm -hmm. If you want a review of a program, that means you have done it for three, four years, mm -hmm. and you have achieved successes, you have uh, seen or observed challenges. So you sit back. Let me look at my successes. Let me look at my challenges. How do I approach the challenges? These are the successes I have made. How do I improve upon them? That is the uh, review we are talking about. You see, but they have taken it that, oh, Review means cancellation. And we will never do that. If we didn't want free senior high school, why did we even start it in the first place mm -hmm. in 2015? That is a question we should be asking ourselves. Well, there are some media footages that seek to suggest that your flag bearer during previous campaigns mm -hmm. said that we were not ready for free SHS. We didn't even have the means to embark on such a project. I don't think that was what he meant. If that was what he meant, why did he introduce it progressively free? Mm -hmm. You see, because we started with day students in 2015, 2016, hoping that in the following year, we'll be able to uh, make sure that all others get on board. But if you just go and say he was saying the resources were not there, if the resources were not there, how did he start it? You see, so everything depends on the budgetary allocation okay yeah okay and so when you're, you 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 are given the note and you get to review the PHS policy what is that addition or subtraction you're going to make with the policy if you listen to our flag bearer mm -hmm. uh, during his interaction with the media and then when they launched the youth uh, manifesto that uh, he mentioned it that uh, there will be a review of the free senior high school uh, 100 days after he has assumed office. Okay. Uh, the review is going to look at uh, what we have now. Uh, we will make sure that uh, one aspect which we will look at is the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. How do we quickly improve upon the infrastructure? Then make sure that uh, all students begin the academic year at the same time and end at the same so time. So that means you're going to scrap the red, gold, green. Oh, that is the obnoxious uh, uh, what uh, double track. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing we will do. 
if you are going to do that within the first hundred days, how are you going to be accommodating? No, what I mean is within the next the first hundred days, mm -hmm. there will be stakeholder engagement okay. to review the policy okay. and see how best we can go forward. But while that review or the engagement is ongoing, as a government, we will be looking at how can we end the double track as quickly as possible. You'll be taking all of these decisions within the first 100 days. No, you're not getting it. I'm saying that within the 100 years, mm -hmm. 100 days, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be engaging the public. Okay. How do we review the program? But behind the scene, we will also be working as a government. How do we put infrastructure in place so that by the beginning of the next academic year, there will be no double track. Mm. That is what I mean. But do you think that if you're given the nod and then you decide to review and add on to the infrastructure deficit that we have in the country, do you have the funds available to put up the structures? You see, because there are hundreds of thousands of students going into school every yes, year. Yes, I've told you earlier mm -hmm. that uh, this government, as we have now, spends money frivolously. Okay. And we will not come and do that. Okay. We will make sure that we we use the resources carefully, so that the people can benefit from it. From it, not individuals amassing wealth, mm. putting millions of dollars in containers in their houses or under their beds. We will not do that. We will use the resources for the benefit of the people. So, if we are not going to pay twelve million dollars as they did in Polugu for no work done. Not for the 300 million Ghana cities they pay for that pit over there which they call Katrina. Or any other thing which will not bring uh, any benefits to the mm. people. So we will look at our resources. But you also Prudent management of resources that Ghanaians will put our, okay. at our disposal. You also acknowledge the fact that at the moment we are getting funds from the IMF. And you are likely going to pay for the loan that we owe. How will you just propose that? Well, you see, what is going to happen mm -hmm. is that we have budgetary allocation okay. for every sector. Okay. And as part of the Ministry of Education budget, provision should be made or will be made for all these things. Uh, if we look at the free senior house school as we have it now, there, there's so much corruption in the system. Mm -hmm. You see? You say now, if we, you mean? now, everything is centered in Accra. Even food items are bought in Accra and sent to my constituency. Food items are bought in Accra, rice, beans, and whatnot, and sent to uh, Bolga, you see. So we are going to decentralize the system that you are in a district. We want you to get this money for you. Use it to feed the students. So nobody in Accra will buy a tin of uh, milk and then send to you in uh, mm. uh, Wa. Okay. Yeah. So by doing that, we're going to save a lot of uh, resources. But if you go to the schools now, the quantity that is sent there is not the quantity government is paying for. We know all those things. They go and uh, cut the weight and then supply at a very high cost to the uh, government and then send to the school. So as a head, you cannot reject whatever is brought to you. You must accept. What is giving. But I mean, have you raised concerns about these? Since you, you say you know about we, it, we have said it several times. And they, the they, will, they will deny it. Even when I talk about uh, some uh, infected or infested rice some time ago, mm -hmm. the minister denied it. Okay. But later on, Kevin uh, Taylor, if you remember, he brought it out and then they saw it that what I was saying was true. So when the minister met me one day, I told him, You, you see what I said and you deny it. And where we ended in there. So you are launching your manifesto this Saturday. Talk to us about the provisions for education in the country, even before we get to see the documents ourselves. Yes, uh, one major thing is a free stress level 100 mm -hmm. program. We have observed that uh, over the years, parents find it very difficult to get money for their wars to enter the university or tertiary institution. So what we're going to do as in the manifesto is that uh, we'll give you a grant okay. to cover your level 100 academic user fee 
So you get admission to University of Ghana, mm -hmm. you produce your admission letter, we will direct you to student loan trust fund. There's a grant, there will be a grant there. It's not, when you say grant, that means it's for free. You are not to refund it. So that's what we're going to do. That every level 100 students, you get your admission letter, the fee quoted by the university will be paid on your behalf. Mm. But don't you think that all of these freebies instituted in the education sector is going to overburden the public purse? Because now we have tablets to pay for. You are still going to be continuing with the free teachers policy and the feeding. Now you are introducing the level 100 no street, no stress policy. Will that overburden the public purse? Well, that is what you would think. But as I said earlier, mm -hmm. if you budget for it and you work towards it, you okay, can get it easy. Now look at the uh, bill at the presidency, annual budget of about three billion. What do they use the money for? Just employing or engaging so many people. Mm -hmm. They call them uh, presidential staffers and they are paying them huge sums of money every month. If you cut that down number by 70%, you can save money to pay for the level 100 students. Is that feasible? It is feasible. Because you are looking at over 125,000 Yes, annually. yeah, that will be about some on the average. That is about uh, three hundred million mm -hmm. cities annually, mm -hmm. and you, you think we can raise it as a nation to support uh, the level hundred students? We can do so. There are some who have said that. I mean, in your during the launch of the youth manifesto, it said that from two hundred to four hundred students that are faced with economic challenges may be offered loans. Yes. Why don't you start from the level hundred? Oh, you see. The first thing you have to understand is that uh, as parents, mm -hmm. the major problem they face is what they call admission fee. Okay. So if that is cleared for you, that stress is taken off your head. Then you can think of other things. You know, if you are going to be on campus, you will have to pay for accommodation. Mm -hmm. That is another headache. You see. So, so are you are you just absorbing the academic user fee? We are just absorbing one, that okay. is like a user fee, so mm -hmm. that you can think of the others. You see, because every year you have to be paying fees, and I think if you are able to support them with at least the academic user fee for the first year, uh, I think you have done much for them. Will this policy ensure quality education? It is not going to create any problem about quality education. They are going to help the students have a stable mind. That oh, after academic visa fee, it has been taken care of. What you will do now is what to eat, and then wake up and go to your lecture theater. Mm -hmm. It's rather going to improve upon the quality. I'm asking because you raised issues about infrastructure within the tertiary levels. Yeah. So if you're going to be admitting these number of students annually for free with no stress, how are we going to be ensuring that they don't have to stand by windows and be taking lecture notes while yeah. paying atten attention in class? Yeah, if you you will get the manifesto mm -hmm. very soon. Okay. You will realize that there is a step uh, how do I call it? Uh, there are steps mm -hmm. that we are going to follow. Mm -hmm. How do we increase upon uh, lecture theaters in the various institutions? So we have that infrastructure program over there. How do we get more accommodation for uh, students? So you will see that during the youth uh, manifesto program, uh, GM stated that uh, we are going to engage PPP, mm -hmm. so that you can put up uh, affordable hostels on university campuses, so that uh, the teeming number of uh, youth that will go to the tertiary institutions will have accommodation at a cheaper rate to uh, accommodate themselves. Yeah, okay. so the plans are there. Okay. Yeah. When the manifesto is out, you see. I mean, we, we just want to get that school before the manifesto. But apart from the stress, we level 100 no stress policy. Yeah. What else are we looking at in, in your manifesto regarding education? Oh, uh, we've spoken about the uh, the review of the free senior mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at uh, teacher welfare. Okay. We'll look at that. Then the, we are going to welfare. abolish the. Uh, teacher licensure examination mm -hmm. because we feel that uh, it should be part of the curriculum for colleges of education. So that at the time you are leaving college, you just write your licensure examination as part of your final examination. Okay. And when you pass, you get your. And we'll make sure that anyone who completes college of education 
is immediately employed. Unlike what we have in the system that those who finished 2022 mm -hmm. are yet to be employed. We will not do that. We will continue with the old system. Now, the government is proposing that it was captured in their manifesto that teachers and nurses will be given grants so that they can access the vehicles with 1.8 engine meter capacity to help, especially those in the rural areas. So, Tell me about this policy. I think is, is it a good one? Uh, four years ago, they say one teacher, one house. They have not been able to deliver. So I don't know how they are going to deliver on this one. So I don't want to comment on because I know they are they won't be able to do it. And Ghana so even not giving them give them the opportunity. So you you, you think you think they just put that in to excite people? Yeah, to excite the teachers and think that they can uh, hoodwink them and then they will vote for them. We know them now. Because you promise them houses. Have you seen any? Anybody may, 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 have you seen them commissioning any house? May, maybe the cars appear cheaper than the houses, don't you think? So? Oh, I see. <laughs> when you don't have a place to rest your head, you'll be thinking of cars. Or maybe this can be beneficial to the teachers in the rural areas. In, in what way? What, what are the roads on which they're going to drive? Mm -hmm. When the roads are terrible, in my constituency, there, mm -hmm. apart from there are no good roads in my constituency. Okay. Yes. When GM was about to do one for us, they came and stopped it. So if you go and give them vehicles now, electric vehicles, why are they even going to charge the, the vehicles when the, the, when the, when the batteries there's run out? There's stability in the country, <laughs> don't you agree? Oh, are you sure? <laughs> uh, well, we uh, restored power to what the state it is now before they came to power. And they don't want to accept so, it. So, I mean, the even way, the, 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 uh, uh, what, uh, Dr. Bao, Bao said it, that if uh, President Mahama ended doing so, uh, did he deserve any uh, praise? So he acknowledged that, yes, President Mahama ended to do so mm -hmm. in this country. Okay, so you've talked about the tertiary level, you've talked about free HHS policy. What happens to the basic schools? I think uh, we spoke about it earlier, and I was saying that uh, we need to pay attention mm -hmm. to basic school. Is, is it captured in your manifesto? Do you yes. have a plan for them? That is, you see, we want to do a reform program mm -hmm. of the educational system in the country. Uh, what do we need? What do we want the child to achieve at the end of basic education? You see, is it only reading and writing? What, what do we want? How do we prepare the child for the next level of education after junior high school? If the child is unable to continue to uh, senior high school, what program do we have for that child? Mm. So we are going to look at a review of our basic education. Uh, in the context in which we find ourselves now as a country. Right. Yeah. You, you talked about uh, this government failing to eliminate the schools under trees. What, what's your plan for that? Well, I think uh, we're going to have a major review, as I said, about our basic education system in okay. the country. Okay. Uh, infrastructure is one of them provision of a textbooks and resources mm. for teachers. Okay. And then the training that we give to our teachers, yeah, all that will combine to make sure that uh, we give an effective uh, quality education mm. to Ghanaians. <laughs> right. Now, away from education, I'll, I'll come back to your constituency before we wrap up shortly. So you talked <coughs> about the poor nature of the roads. Yeah. What is the status of the health infrastructure in there? Well, um, we have uh, a number of health institutions okay. over there. Uh, we have uh, health centers, we have uh, clinics. Um, a lot of chip compounds. Yeah, we have a number of chip compounds. I've been able to build a few. Mm. Yeah, I'm still consulting uh, residential accommodation for them. I've uh, renovated uh, one or two bungalows for the nurses. Okay. Yeah. Uh, health delivery is not too bad. Uh, we hope that uh, in the coming years, we should be able to get a good district hospital and then uh, we we'll move from there. Okay. So for health, yes, we have the challenges because the cheap compounds in the rural areas, we are lucky that the nurses that have been posted mm. to the district are ready to live in these uh, communities okay. yeah, and work for us. This is because we provide them with accommodation. So as we built the cheap compound, we provided accommodation mm. as well. Yeah. What of Flooding. Are you forced with issues of flooding? Because once your, your roads are not good, you're likely going to be having some issues. No, we don't have transportation. Uh, we don't have um, 
flood okay. uh, related uh, challenges okay. in our constituents. Okay. It's only that when we are in the rainy season, mm -hmm. we have challenges with our roads. Mm -hmm. uh, the potholes become filled with uh, water and then it becomes muddy. Okay. Yeah, traveling becomes very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is the major problem we have uh, with our roads. And, and we are not flood prone. Uh, Concerns. Mm. And I, I know that, I mean, it, it, it's not even your, your role to construct roads for the people, but what assurances do they have that given give, when they give you the note, this problem may be a thing of the past? In the event that the NDC is not going to get to power, just saying. Oh, until NDC comes to power, I don't see any future for good roads in our constraints. I mm. can tell you uh, on authority. Because if this government had the people uh, at heart, they wouldn't have uh, asked the contractor to stop work. Mm. Look at the whole Denu Aplau road. That is a major road passing through the constituency. It has gone so bad that when you are traveling, a distance of about uh, one and a half hours or two hours from uh, road to Aplau, now use about four hours or more. W will you not lobby for them? Oh, we have spoken several times. Even in 20... 2019 or so, when they introduced that uh, year of roads, mm -hmm. you remember, mm -hmm. when they came to parliament, we did not see any roads in the whole region. So we rose as a, a caucus. Then they quickly made an, uh, uh, an addendum or a, appendix. Then they brought the whole Zoje, Akrawo Road. From that day up to today, nothing has happened. These are the only roads constructed in the water region. I said nothing has happened. Okay. Yes. So that road, the state is as bad as it is now for the years okay. now and by. And um, uh, in rounding up, I mean, there are people that have compared you to Kuji Tabla are saying that when it comes to these two members of parliament, it will be difficult to take them out of their constituencies. Is that true? Um, it's because we have lived with the people. Mm -hmm. And I can say that every MP from the voter regime is doing well. We are doing our best for our people. Uh, although we have been in opposition for eight years, mm. we have all done our best. So we are all coming back. Okay. And uh, we are even sure and very sure that we will take our seat back to make it complete. From the yes. You don't think he's worked enough to deserve uh, oh, another time? The people must make a, a new choice. Even if he's performed? Well, I don't see what. What measures you want to put in place, or how do you measure that that he has performed very well? Although, look at the Huawei, the Huawei roads when you are going from uh, um, Harvard to Huawei. Mm -hmm. Look at the road. I, I don't know if you have traveled there. I, I haven't flied that. Yes, he's, he's a minister. He could have lobbied very well for that route, but when they're going there, it's terrible. Yeah, so that is. That our seat is NDC seat, and you must take it. That is all. Yeah, so see. every MP in Botswana <laughs> region, for me, is doing his or her best. Okay. Uh, not that uh, it is difficult to take the two of us out. Yeah, but for all MPs, I can speak mm. that we are all coming back. So in rounding up, we are gearing towards the 2024 elections. I think it is about 106 days to the election. What should the people of Akachino vote for you? And my producer says that. Your message should be in your, your local dialect. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Will you understand? <laughs> you, you yes. that. Okay. Um, for Majuma, I do when I catch in of Tokata, the Magadak, when no, the Alley, Ola Magana, the Vito, Efiao, the Guple, Mamao, Ali Ola Magana, a very fair, you would do a silla shimmer. Nippon boy, Dodo. The government never party manages you, huh? Nippon boy, a doto or budget woman. My question, but then you were Oga da Conam, the payaman. There were new to end this advice here. Open young here, you can hear a morning hour, a carding hour, pretty hour, play a coding hour, make a quota no kata. There are no da Conam, no da Conam, and this, however, totally, my valley never come to one. Okay. Yeah. But what did you mean? <laughs> oh, I just wanted to thank the chiefs okay. and queen mothers and everybody in the constituency mm. for the support they have given me in these 12 years. Okay. I am going for the fourth term. 
uh, still need their support so that we can continue and complete development projects that we have uh, started. And I can assure them that all the abandoned projects will be completed mm. when NDC comes back to power. Okay. Thank you very much. So I've been speaking to the Member of Parliament for Akachi North, Honorable Peter Nochukotoy, on the campaign trail. He's touted a number of achievements from his part and, of course, his party at large. He's also touted some challenges that the NPP has introduced to the constituency, if I may put it that way. But as I always say, you get to decide ultimately on December 7 because you are in the constituency, so you know what works for you better. We'll see you again on the next episode of Campaign Trail. I am Tutu Adanso.